Why does JJK's art look so different? The art style is an important topic for any JJK fan because everyone has had an opinion on it from the very beginning, with some of the biggest fans having to defend the art style from haters and even other fans. So the fact that the art style has gone through significant changes brings up an important question. What kinds of changes have we seen in this art style, and how have they affected the overall look and feel of the series as a whole? Now, there have been a number of changes, and it's not even in a clear order. In fact, a lot of people will tell you that they feel like the art style has changed, but they can't really explain what's different from before. As you'll see towards the end of the video, Akutami even goes back to their older techniques at some points. So in order to compile these changes in a way that's easy to remember, I scanned through the whole series and came up with five stages of JJK's art style. Starting all the way from the beginning, the first stage I noticed was the JJK Zero stage. As you can imagine, this is the stage or era of JJK's art style that begins and ends with JJK Volume Zero. Some people might say that you can skip this part of the discussion and start with Volume 1, but as you'll quickly notice, there's actually a lot of changes given the short window between JJK Zero and JJK Volume 1. One thing that stands out right away is the thick line work. And when I say line work, I'm referring to the outlines of the characters. Whereas JJK would come to adopt a rougher style in later stages, JJK Zero consists of a lot of thick black outlines, reflecting Akutami's developing art style and giving off sort of a webtoon kind of vibe throughout the volume. Facial features are also pretty big in size, mouths, eyes, and especially noses. Like, there will be panels when a character's nose takes up half their face, and sometimes it looks like one of Mr. Crocker's ears. There's also a lot of detail in the facial features. For example, one thing I noticed was how there's a lot of panels where teeth will be individually outlined, as opposed to the more conventional anime take where characters will just have, like, two big teeth. This focus on detail gives JJK Zero a more realistic tone than the following stages of JJK. But at the same time, you also have comparatively more panels with blank or white backgrounds in JJK Zero. Meanwhile, as is the case in most of JJK, Actual backgrounds and scenery are just sort of drawn as is. They're not stylized at all and don't get a ton of distinctive detail, making them look almost like computer renderings. One thing I didn't expect to see is the cell shading. JJK is pretty well known for its rough approach to shading, but in JJK Zero, there's a good amount of conventional cell shading. On that note, JJK Zero also lacks the dynamic paneling that the series would become famous for later on. It's mostly pretty traditional paneling with the occasional twist. Overall, JJK Zero's art style feels somewhat generic, especially when compared to the rest of the series but we do get one of the series-defining characteristics at this point, namely the shape of the characters. JJK characters all have a distinct look to them, and it's mainly due to the polygonal composition of the characters. The characters all consist of a lot of sharp, pointy angles, as opposed to more traditional anime that like to round characters out. Granted, characters in JJK Zero are pretty round, I mean, just compare JJK Zero Ghetto to regular Ghetto. It's kind of wild to see just how rounded out he was. But it just goes to show how Akutami would come to find that distinct aspect of their character designs. And on that note, let's get into how they do that in the next stage of JJK. Actually, before I do that, make sure to like the video if you're enjoying it so far. It's the easiest way to support the channel, and it helps spread the video to other viewers like you. Now, the next stage is what I just referred to as early JJK, as it starts with chapter 1, obviously, and ends right around chapter 83-ish. And this stage can be defined by a few characteristics. First of which is the comedic reactions and chibi faces. Granted, there were a lot of these in JJK Zero, too, but there's a ton of them in JJK Volume 1 and onward, especially with Yuji. Yuji will often just have these two lines for eyes, making him look like Tintin, and it really speaks to his character. But in general, these kinds of reactions give early JJK a relatively goofier tone. This is supplemented by the transition away from so many details. As opposed to JJK Zero, which has this realistic look, early JJK does away with this and also has significantly less cell shading, toning the characters down and making them look much simpler. In terms of color, in general, there's a lot less of it. So instead of lots of shades of gray, it's a lot of black and white, with a simple palette of grays reserved for cell shading and scenery. One form of detail that is more or less retained is in the eyes. 
Eyes are still somewhat detailed in early JJK. Even female characters like Nobara, who mostly just have one big black dot in each eye, have some detail. It's worth noting that eyes in this stage are rarely enclosed, so the outlines will usually have openings, making them blend into faces and giving characters much flatter faces. Also, it's worth noting that eyes generally have large whites with small pupils and irises. It's a stylistic choice that simplifies the characters without making them look too cartoony. But there's two more changes that are probably the most important in JJK. One of which is the lining. The lining is much, much thinner in early JJK as opposed to JJK Zero, moving away from the more traditional comic style and giving the series the iconic rough look. And of course, this is also where Akutami starts to go off with the paneling, breaking away from the conventional squares and rectangles. It's mostly done in fights, but it's what comes to define the series, the peak of which takes place in the fights between Gojo and Toji. And that brings us to the next stage of JJK's art, a stage that I simply dub Shibuya. Obviously, this stage takes place over the course of the Shibuya incident. Admittedly, there aren't that many changes at this point, in fact, many would argue this arc doesn't even warrant getting its own stage. However, the changes are noticeable enough that this arc can be distinguished from others. The first change you can notice is the lack of chibi faces. There are still some comedic panels and reaction faces, but Yuji's Tintin eyes are pretty much gone and you don't get a ton of these, which is fitting given the arc this is. Facial features are also pretty small in this arc. So, for example, the eyes, noses, and mouth of a character generally don't take up a whole lot of space when you look at the whole face of a character. In fact, mouths are really toned down and are usually just a simple straight line. Eyes, while smaller, are generally the same in terms of detail and can still vary depending on the panel. Now, those are the definitive traits of this arc. The next two aren't really restricted to Shibuya. Rather, Shibuya just serves as a turning point. In other words, these are changes that took place before, but by this point, they have more or less moved away from one stage and into the next. So for example, like I said before, characters were already pretty polygonal in early JJK. But it's worth noting that in Shibuya, roundness is almost completely gone. By this point, characters are pretty much entirely composed of sharp angles and shapes, and we've officially moved away from the round character designs of JJK Zero. One more thing worth noting is the bizarre nature of character designs. Akutami has a fairly conventional approach to character designs in that the more powerful or bizarre abilities a character has, the stranger their character design tends to be. So for example, all the students look fairly normal, and for the most part, they all have pretty normal haircuts and clothes. The villains and cursed sorcerers have the strangest character designs. And then the teachers are all somewhere in the middle. A great example of this is Kusakabe. Kusakabe, introduced in Chapter 83, is one of the most normal-looking characters out of all of the teachers. Incidentally, he just so happens to lack an innate technique. But he also stands out due to his long jacket and his katana, which reminds readers that while he tends to be a background character, he's still very strong. But that's pretty much it for the Shibuya stage. The next stage, also fairly intuitive, is what I call the post-Shibuya stage. This stage starts right after Shibuya, and as far as I can tell, it's the final stage. In other words, it's the stage we're in right now. Starting right after Shibuya, there's three significant changes. First of which is the line work. The line work gets a lot rougher, but also gets a lot thicker. As you may notice in early JJK, while the line work is rough back then as well, it's usually very thin. Here it starts to consist of a lot of thick black lines, almost reminiscent of JJK Zero. On that note, another trait that makes a return from JJK Zero is the use of more facial features. So for example, you start to see more detail in teeth again, as opposed to the usual two teeth style of anime. More noticeable are the eyes. I don't have a definite statement on eyes, only because at this point eyes are kind of all over the place. Now of course, eyes in any series will never really stay the same. They're a part of expression, so an artist will draw them to fit that scene. But in the case of JJK, there's a lot of variety in terms of shape and detail. An example that comes to mind is Yuta in Chapter 178. Sometimes they'll have pretty basic looking eyes that are just a circle with a black dot. Sometimes it'll be the same except the eyes are much bigger, making the pupil look more dilated. And then you have this panel where the shape of the eye is pretty balanced, but there's clearly more detail. It's also worth noting that in the very recent chapters, 
Akutami seems a bit more partial to drawing in closed eyes as opposed to the open eyes in earlier JJK. Now, one change that isn't reminiscent of JJK Zero is the removal of shading. Now, I say this as a general statement because obviously there's still shading. But the more we move on from Shibuya, the less cell shading we can see, at least on characters. By the time of the arc we're in right now, panels are almost always black and white with almost no grays. There's a number of reasons why this could be. For example, it could just be a way to cut down on drawing time. But in any event, it combines with other aspects of the art to give it a much flatter aesthetic than ever before. But there's one change that balances this out. As we enter the current battle against Tsukuna, we start to see the return of more rounded out drawings. For example, if you look at chapter 246, you'll notice a stark contrast between the composition from before and the composition now. Characters still have these pointy edges, but the chins and noses are rounded out rather than being polygonal. It's a subtle change, but like I said, it does make up for the fact that there's really not that much shading in the current chapters. Now, on that note, here's where we can start to recap this timeline. So, we started with JJK Zero. In that stage, we had a lot of thick line work and it was a more conventional art style. Characters were more detailed and rounded out. Then, starting with Volume 1, we get the more polygonal characters. In this early stage of JJK, we see the first shift away from grays and cell shading and a shift towards black and white. And of course, this is when the paneling comes to define JJK. In Shibuya, these changes reach their peak and we get an art style that's almost completely different from the days of JJK Zero. Now, in the post-Shibuya stage, characters are even rougher, there's almost no cell shading, but we're starting to see the return of some traits of the JJK Zero days. Characters are a bit more rounded out, and while the art style in general is much flatter, there's more attention paid to the smaller details. So, this is the evolution of JJK's art style. It's certainly not as drastic as in other series, but when you take the time to carefully look at it, there's clearly a lot of artistic choices that Akutami has made over the course of more than 200 chapters. This is why the art style looks so different than it used to, but weirdly enough, it's also using techniques from the very beginning. It's a direction that some people hate while others love. But regardless of where you stand, these are the choices that have come to define the look and feel of Jujutsu Kaisen. So, now I'd like to hear what you think. What other changes have you noticed? How would you define the evolution of JJK's art style? Share your thoughts and see what everyone else has to say down in the comments. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week on my community tab. And if you'd like another discussion like this one, then make sure to check out my video on Yuji. In that video, I explain why Yuji is a great main character, even though he's usually on the sidelines. You can find it in the playlist linked right here. Until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.